Las Vegas remains the entertainment capital of the world, and it's not due just to luck. It's due to hard work behind the scenes by producers up and down the Strip, as well as off the Strip and downtown Las Vegas. One of these producers is my guest, John Bentham. He's founder of Ivory Star Productions. He's been specializing in Las Vegas entertainment since 1999, and he currently produces, among other shows, Adam London, Lafternoon, Tape Face, Feral, Dylan, Comedy Magician, Marriage Can't Be Murder, and soon the return of Jersey Boys. For everything about Ivory Star Productions, go to ivorystar.com, and you can follow them on Facebook, X, Instagram, and YouTube. And John, welcome to the show. Hey, Ira, it's good to be here. I'm glad that you're here, because I have some interesting questions for you, including the fact that, you know, you could have been a lawyer, but no, you go into the <laughs> entertainment business instead. So clearly, you're, you're still doing a lot of work, but you're probably having a little bit more fun. Would that be a fair assessment? Fair assessment. Yeah. You know, I've, I've been doing theater and stay at one point. It just became obvious to me that there probably was a little bit more steady work behind the scenes. And while I was, you know, on stage and on camera, I still was very active in the business end of things. So I would just simply continue to do both. And then at one point I was like, you know what, I just need to focus on the behind the scenes. And uh, that's what I've done. I could see you as a stand-up comedian, but that's just me. I just I could see you have a <laughs> theatrical personality about you. Yeah, my wife would disagree with you and my kids. <laughs> I can tell a mean dad joke from time to time, but as soon as I tell it, I forget it. The you started out in life as an actor in a local children's theater, so that was the first part of your career, and then yeah. you became, and and then it evolved obviously from there. The part that fascinates me about you is that how do you and I know you have a staff, but even so. How do you juggle X number of production shows, not just in Las Vegas, but I know you do consulting and work in other areas as well, venues and, and locations. How do you do that? I've never, I can only focus on one thing at a time. I cannot multitask. If I'm going to blow my nose, I'm blowing my nose and that's it. I can't do anything. How do you do that? I think it's twofold. You, you have to be able to multitask and you have to have a good team that, that also uh, can multitask. Um, I've been very, very fortunate to have a great court team that I've had for more than a decade working with me. And then we've got some newer people that have joined within the last five or six years. Um, yeah. And, you know, there's not a lot of downtime. I uh, constantly have to be working on on the next thing or, or, or keeping on top of it. Uh, and certainly with, uh, with us bringing back Jersey Boys, that's the biggest uh, project that we've done to date. And so, th you know, that's a lot. That's a lot right there. That so is. we are going to be staffing up for that and, um, and and bringing in people just to deal with, uh, you know, Jersey Boys, like a company manager and, of, of course, you know, the production elements. When you decide to do something like that, for example, with Jersey Boys, which was big, do you research the market, meaning Las Vegas in this case, to see that it warrants a return? Because it did such great business while they were here originally. Yeah, it did great business while it was here. And, you know, it was one of those things when uh, when I read that it was closing, um, I thought to myself, you know, th this show isn't dead. You know, it was still selling really well. Um, and uh, it, it just has kind of, kind of a timeless music catalog um, that that generations really can get behind. And so uh, even before it closed, I met with the Dodgers, the original producers of the show. Yeah. Not the baseball team, right? No, Dodgers Theatricals. <laughs> it's a great yes. organization that started up in New York, and, and they've produced some amazing multi They've got a team uh, that we pulled up into for the return of Jersey Boys. So all of the associates that worked on the original Broadway show and, and the, the shows here in Vegas have returned to help us create an incredible uh, cast and an incredible show that will be reflective of what was on Broadway and and the off-Broadway one and, and the two shows here in Vegas. So it's really going to be a culmination of that. We're super excited about the cast. We just had auditions. Uh, and then in addition to that, we're actually going to have a 10-piece live band. And so um, many of the other shows, uh, like the off-Broadway show, had only six musicians. So we're bringing back the bigger band just to really create that great sound um, that is uh, Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. Do you have an opening date yet, Seth? Yeah, we're going to open December 21st for previews. And then our VIP media uh, grand opening is January 17th. Okay, and of course, the important question, the venue. Yeah, listen, it's such a great venue. We're going to be hosted at the Orleans Hotel Casino um, and their 850-seat showroom. What's so great about this show uh, 
in this showroom is that it's an intimate space with an amazing sound uh, quality. You know, this showroom has hosted comedians as well as uh, shows. And coincidentally, it hosted the first time Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons came in October of, I believe, 2001 something along that timeline. So we're actually opening up in the same showroom on the same stage that Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons performed many years ago. Um, it, it's a great connection. And of course, the hosting for the first time a long-term residency in that showroom. Are you going to invite Frankie to the opening? Of course. Yes, I thought you might. <laughs> uh, yeah, Frankie Frankie will be invited. Bob Godio will be invited. Uh, the family of the others will be invited. Oh, so yeah, we look okay. forward to making it a really big bash and, and a celebration, not only of uh, Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons and the show, but just of that genre of music that's just so popular. How do you manage, again, we, I have to go back to this because it fascinates me. You are, because you're managing so many different shows, and I know, again, you have a wonderful staff, but do you, how do you avoid getting those calls in the middle of the night on on your phone about there's a problem. I could see it happening with one show, but if you have five, 10, 15 shows all going on simultaneously, how do you how do you avoid that? You just have to roll with the punches. I mean, we do get calls at all hours of the day and night, and you just have to roll with that. Um, you know, everybody's really good at, at, at handling the things that they can handle. And then if it has to get elevated or or we have to talk about it, everybody's really good about, you know, um, figuring out what needs uh, to happen uh, or who needs to be contacted. Um, I'm not always the first call because, like I said, people have been on our team for a long time, so they know how to deal with issues or crises or or problems, guest complaints, and and they're able to deal with it themselves. And and certainly everybody on our team is empowered to to to, to make those decisions and to do that themselves. Um, so you know, it, fortunately, I, I haven't had a lot of those lately. Uh, of course, it's you know it's different now than it was 20 years ago or even 15 years ago. You know there was a lot more you know running from hotel to hotel, casino showroom just casino showroom. Uh, don't have to do that quite as much. Doesn't look like it aged you at all. Your family's uh, happy with your decision to have nine million shows going on at the same time. <laughs> hey, listen, it's tough, you know, and and, and really, I don't know if you mentioned this, but you know, right now we're in heavy planning mode for glittering lights out of the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. So we took that on about 12, 13 years ago. And really that's a huge show in and of itself because it's a 60 night production uh, and it's grown to such a, a caliber where it's a huge project that we've undertaken and we've grown it such that there's a lot expected of us and there's a lot that we expect of it so that we can give back to the community. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, doing glittering lights simultaneously with our other shows while launching Jersey Boys, that's a huge undertaking. <laughs> It is. How do you, uh, you don't strike me as a cynical person. How do you maintain your enthusiasm and your love for what you do and not become cynical just because show business can be a hard business? Yeah, listen, showbiz is a hard business, uh, as is as is the casino business and and, and what uh, all of our team does out here. I mean, it's it, it's tough to be in Vegas right now, uh, but, you know, you just have to keep that positive attitude. I've got a great family who, uh, you know, who I get to go home to every night and that makes me smile. Uh, when I get text messages throughout the day from my kids, I've got five boys, uh, an incredible wife who um, helped me start this company uh, back in 2001. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, we all work together and uh, and play together. And so that's what helps keep me going and keeps me positive because what's the point if you're not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And your five kids are five other productions that you're, you have, but that's on the on the uh, family side. So yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Guy. No, and I appreciate you taking time to talk because I know how crazy the business can be. You, your background includes you were the associate producer for David Copperfield. So were you able to watch him and learn elements of not necessarily magic and not necessarily showmanship, but more of the business side of things. Yeah. I mean, above all else, he is, he is the world's best magician. And I wasn't a big magic fan when I joined his team. Uh, but you know, more than that, he is an incredible businessman who has created an, an empire that just transcends magic and the performing arts. Um, you know, he's, he, he really has, um, just in all facets, just exceeded, I think, anybody's wildest imagination of what a, an illusionist could be. Um, he he was what brought me out here to Las Vegas. I, I come from Texas. 
And in 1999, he he moved me out here to be actually one of his first full-time employees, uh, if you can believe that, because he'd been touring forever uh, right. and uh, been around for a long time, but didn't have any full-time employees. So uh, he brought me out here in 99, and I worked with him for about four years, uh, had an incredible experience, a lot, not only about show business, um, but also about for the four years that I worked with him, he was an incredible uh, human just to kind of shadow and 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 watch. Are there some other people that you looked up to and learned from besides David Copperfield in the last 10, 15 years? Not really, but I think I, you said, is there a lot? It, are... Yeah, what I said was, are there other people besides David that you learned a lot of stuff from or some stuff from from the business? Yeah. You know, I grew up in Dallas and um, in, in that market, uh, it's certainly a huge theater market, but nothing like Las Vegas. Um, but I was always really fortunate to be surrounded by teachers and professors who really hands on, you know, director, huge church, about a hundred kids in our choir. And we did a tour every year. She let us play in the tour. So we routed the tour and, and we did that and we got to, you know, that was my kind of first foray into touring. Uh, and then we planned a five or six city tour that we did on our spring break. Um, when I was involved in RCT Children's Theater, you know, I got to see both ends, both the actor end and the business end of things. And so from 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 little on up, I was able to be given those opportunities uh, to kind of really learn hands on all aspects of the business. And then when I came here to Vegas and worked with David, he, he had some incredible people working with him, uh, including uh, Lori Fry and, and Bob Kane uh, and Joe Marsh and Glenn Bechtel. And I got to work with all of those people who had built multi-million dollar companies and sold them and, uh, and you know, uh, booked this tour as well as other tours like Lord of the Dance worldwide. Uh, so I really was able to be a fly on the wall and just kind of learn and observe and, and um, you know, kind of be a sponge. For all those people. In fact, I, I still work with uh, Lori Fry. I work with to this day on Tape Face down at the MGM. And Bob Kane and I just communicated a week or two ago. So uh, some incredible people really, you know, came came together because of my experience and my working with David Copperfield. When did you decide to start Ivory Star Productions? At some point you said, you know, I enjoy really working with all these wonderful people. And now I want to take the reins and produce my own material, or at least other people's material as a producer, as a production company. So I was with David about four years in total. Um, I met my uh, wife uh, out on the road. So I worked with David for about four years uh, and about a year in, year, year and a half into working with him, uh, somebody uh, to intern with us from a small town in West Virginia. And uh, lo and behold, that ends up being my wife. Uh, and so, you know, as we started dating and figuring out our future, I really wanted to, to, to be more grounded. At that time, we were touring about 40 weeks out of the year. And so I wanted to be in one place. And so it just made sense to leave the road and leave, you know, David and, and kind of start doing things on my own uh, because Vegas had become home um, during my time with David. Um, we, we just decided to make this kind of our home and, um, you know, started Ivory Star Productions. We started that together. And, um, you know, she kind of did some other things along the line, including PR for um, preferred public relations at the time mm -hmm. and uh, kind of honed her skills there. And so then we just kind of have, have grown the business and together. And we started out with, you know, one or two productions. And, and in a lot of in a lot of cases, we partnered with people like Bob Kane and Global Entertainment. Um, the first production I did after um, after uh, David Copperfield was forbidden, forbidden Vegas. I don't know if you remember that. Yes, but I do. Yes. That was from the original Broadway uh, team that was in Broadway. We had here Weston Casarina for probably about a year. Um, and so that was my first production to associate produce. Uh, and then kind of it, it just kind of grew from there. Do you see any limits in the sense that we? I alluded to it earlier, or actually I was pretty blatant about it, but I, I was amazed how many shows you could keep spinning up in the air, like plates from the old Ed Sullivan show. But <laughs> so uh, is there, uh, well, in a way your future is unlimited or you, you could always staff up if you need to, but do you, do, you, do you reach a certain point where you say, okay, I can manage 20 shows, but I can't manage 21 shows, or do you even, do you even not even think about it that way? I, I don't really think about it that way, much to kind of my staff's chagrin or team's <laughs> chagrin. Um, but I, 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 what I really want to do is work with people 
shows, creating great content for people to see and enjoy. If if that long and uh, will will and you know that's sort of how everything in my life from little on on uh, little on up has kind of uh, materialized. It's got involved in glittering lights. When did that start with glittering lights? When this is really cool. Yeah, how did that start with glittering lights? Yeah, so we were we were a sponsor, uh, and right at that time we were starting to have kids. Shannon and I were starting to have kids, and we went to one of the events. And I was like, you know what? This would really be a cool event to produce and grow. Uh, and coincidentally enough, three years later, uh, the people that originally started it retired. Uh, it had moved out to the Speedway. Of course, we had done a lot of work with the Speedway and some people associated with the Speedway. So, you know, we came recommended. We met with um, the producer and and the creator of all the lights, the light displays. Uh, and, you know, it, it kind of is a multifaceted job that needs to be done to make this happen. And so, um, so it kind of fit all the wheelhouses. So we wanted to do something that... Uh, you know, we wanted to do something for the community, but also something for our kids that our kids could kind of really latch on to and, and know what we do from beginning to end. You know, we've been involved for a long time on shows on the Strip and downtown, uh, and that they kind of knew that from the periphery. Oh, well, we do, you know, we work with Marriage Can Be Murder, or we work with Defending the Caveman, or, or what have you. Um, but this was something that they could actually be a part of. Uh, and so over the years, we've had our kids be ticket sellers, uh, be bag uh, bag stuffers mm -hmm. uh, and everything in between. And so they can really become a part of it and really and they've been able to see it grow, too, uh, which has been a fun experience for them to be a part of. I think it's easier than if you were a bricklayer and having your kids have to carry bricks. <laughs> Got to be a it little certainly can be more fun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, you know, with the hot cocoa and the popcorn <laughs> out there, it's a lot more fun for them. <laughs> I would think so. Do, do, is there a theme that you bring to your or a philosophy might be a better term, a philosophy you bring to your decision making in terms of what productions you want to get involved in? Again, for me at this point, it's just working with good people and producing good content uh, that people can enjoy. Um, you know, we we have people send us and we have talks all the time with lots of different productions that either are coming to town or want to come to town or people in town that want to open up and we just don't, it just doesn't materialize because we just are really kind of selective. Um, I think you alluded to to it earlier. I mean, we we could be bigger, we could be, we could have more, but we really are kind of just a small company that provides great services um, and, and great products. And so we kind of want to just limit it to, you know, working with a select number of shows and, and more than that, just good people because life's too short to not. Well, you're right about that. I, I would say the exception to your rule is uh, Jersey Boys because of the scope of it. I mean, yeah. it's clear, it's, you know, it's not, it's not like um, O or something like that uh, it, you know, in that sense. Oh, or any, or any of the Cirque du Soleil kind of productions, but it's still, it's still a major production and 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 has a great pedigree. So there's an example of of something that you really are dealing with that's larger. Do you see it down the road doing some other large productions like that? I, I say large in a relative sense. No, I mean, look, you're you're right. It's it's large. You know, we're used to dealing with casts under ten. And this cast and and crew and and band is probably we're probably in the forties, right? So it it's definitely a much bigger. You know, when, when I sit down with people and they say, "Yeah, well, you're going to need six dressers," I'm like, <laughs> people can't dress themselves, <laughs> but they can't because it's such that the timing is such where it just moves so quickly. So it definitely has been a little bit of an adjustment to figure out, okay, well, what is really needed and what what is not. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah, as you said, I mean, this is this is a huge, massive production, especially compared to what we normally and typically do. Right. Uh, That's why you know, we were involved it. with the Lion King Las Vegas, but it was a whole different level. We didn't have to hire the production people or the cast or anything like that. We we helped them on the marketing and the broker relations side of things to get to get paid butts in seats. So where does that business acumen come from? that you're able to figure out looking at a bigger production, okay, you're going to have to hire X number of dressers now. Okay. I, that has to figure in that budget. So yeah. everybody gets paid, but you also make a profit. Where did that yeah. acting come from for you? 
I I started I started doing uh, entrepreneurial stuff when I was about ten years old. We lived across the street from a golf course, so I would load up a cooler of uh, drinks and take it over there and funds when you know at the time people could get a soft drink for twenty five cents. So I started for has kind of been an entrepreneur. So you've been an entrepreneur, time, which presented itself opportunity. Yes, and you learn. So, but an entrepreneur is someone who has the, the get up and go to do things. But there's also that analytical part of the brain that has to do with looking at yeah. budgets. So, where did you learn that part from? You know what? I don't know. I, I've just been doing it. It feels like my whole life. <laughs> um, I've always been good. At, I've always been good at math, and I've always enjoyed numbers. I've always enjoyed the reality uh, and the fact that you know numbers are an absolute. You can't you can't just say you know two plus two equals five. I mean, that's, you know, and what you do to the left, you do to the right. So, you know, that that's just uh, simple arithmetic. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now you just have to factor in the math for all those dressers. So, yeah, it, it, it's, a, <laughs> yeah. it's a challenge. I could see that. So, yeah. What, what yeah, it is. Yeah. Where did the name Ivory Star come from? It's Ivory Star Productions. And again, it's ivorystar.com. But where did where did that name come from? You know what? Honestly, it's just a name that uh, that my wife Shannon kind of uh, came up with, uh, and fortunately, it was available uh, on the web. Of course, back in two thousand, you know, it, it, there were a lot more domain names available, and it just seemed like it would fit. Yeah, that worked out for you, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at looking ahead, and you see all the growth on the strip, and you see all the changes on the strip, particularly. I know I talked in the opening about productions on off strip and downtown Las Vegas as well. But, but of all those areas, I think the strip is changing even more in a way than downtown is. So do you recalibrate in terms of what you look at for possible strip shows? Yeah, you have to, Ira. Yeah, you have to, Ira. It, you know, I've been here working since 99 and there's been a couple of paradigm shifts during that time. And it, it continues to evolve, you know, what people come to town to do and see, you know, five years ago, well, with the except, you know, with the advent of the Coliseum and Celine Dion, that kind of ushered in a whole new era of, you know, A-list entertainers coming to town and making Vegas, you know, a quote unquote residency stop for a short time. You know, quite honestly, way before that, David Copperfield was doing that. He He was one of the original residency acts. I mean, you could take it back to even the Rat Pack, where they would, you know, they would come here and do their resident their residencies too. So, but for for the seventies and eighties and nineties, there wasn't really kind of that big draw, like you had with Celine, and that you know that kind of ushered in a new era of bringing in big headliners at these bigger places. I mean, that's that's changed entertainment here in Vegas. But Cirque was probably a major change, a player to change things as well. But do you think because of your size and your flexibility, you're going to be able to adapt to any changes along the way, whether it's the strip, off strip or downtown? Yeah, I mean, I think that's key. I think it's key for smaller shows to be able to to work in, in that kind of area and be a little bit more. Um, and, and they can do that quicker, you know, we, whether it's adjusting content, size, pricing, or what what have you. It's mm -hmm. the bigger shows that that are kind of tougher to, to maneuver. Um, we're going to experience that some with Jersey Boys, but of course Jersey Boys has that international uh that international appeal. So it's it's a little different and it's got that music component and it's got a phenomenal story that kind of helps draw everybody to it. And I think you have the advantage of it being at the Orleans because let's face it, traffic on the strip is a bit much and there's the parking issue and all of that. So I think that's a great location for, for this upcoming production. And are you, Yeah, I think it's great too. Uh, you know, it, we, what we found with the shows that are there right now um, is that uh, you know, cause we have marriage can be murder there last afternoon. We've got Leo's and, um, um, uh, and late night magic is there right now. What we found is that we're pulling just as much from the strip as we used to when we were downtown or even had productions on the strip. Uh, and we're pulling more locals as well. And and you're right. I mean, our proximity to the Strip, as well as the fact that we you, people can avoid the Strip if they're locals and come and park for free. Um, the Orleans has incredible restaurants. So you can have a really good night that's reasonable and not have to be involved in, in Strip 
traffic or parking or anything at all. No. That's a great plus. Well, that's a great way to leave it. My guest has been John Bentham. He's founder of Ivory Star Productions. He's been specializing in Las Vegas entertainment since 1999. He currently produces, among other shows, Adam London, Laugh Afternoon, Tape Face, Farrell Dillon, uh, Marriage Can Be Murder, and soon the return of Jersey Boys. For everything about Ivory Star Productions, go to ivorystar.com, and you can follow him on Facebook, X, Instagram, and YouTube. John, thanks for being on the show. Hey, Ira, thanks so much for the invite, and it was good to see you again. Same here. See you next time.